Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining the webinar. Uh, we will give it um, a five minutes just to make sure that everyone joins.
So hello everyone again, and thank you for joining the Future of Luxury Retail webinar today uh, in partnership between Dubai Future Foundation and Rishmont. So an introduction, uh, my, my name is Hinda Samayati. I am uh, a project manager at Dubai Future Accelerator, and I am an account manager currently for the Future of Luxury Retail program. So just uh, to give you an information that the webinar will be recorded for um, this session and it will be shared afterwards in our platform in the landing page of the challenges. So what will be happening in today's webinar? Uh, we will give an introduction about Dubai Future Foundation and Dubai Future Accelerators. Uh, I will hand over to my colleagues from Rishwant to give an introduction about Rishwant and uh, talk to you more about the challenges. And my colleague Natasha Marek here will be taking you through the program design, the opportunity and the timeline. And finally, we will open the floor for uh, the Q&A. You can find the chat box or Q&A box uh, at the bottom. Uh, you can place your questions and we will answer them by the end of uh, the webinar. So uh, what, is about, uh, what is about uh, Dubai Future Foundation and how did we start it? Dubai Future Foundation actually started as an exhibition and the World Government Summit um, where uh, His Highness uh, Sheikh Ahmad bin Rashid turned this initiative uh, to launch Dubai Future Foundation, which is a foundation that shapes the future. From there, in the Buy Future Foundation, we uh, set the strategy uh, based on His Highness uh, quote, uh, the future belongs to those who imagine it, design it, and execute it. And uh, the foundation now uh, is conducted through three pillars. The Imagine Pillar, uh, which uh, the Dubai Future Labs uh, falls under. The Design Pillar, where uh, Dubai Future Accelerators, and of course, I'm uh, sure that many of you have heard of the Museum of the Future, falls under the Design Pillar. And finally, the Execute Pillar, where we develop and execute all our initiatives and projects in partnership with different government entities and private entities. So moving forward to Dubai Future Accelerators, here in the Accelerator, we aim to have partnership between the foundation and uh, government, semi-government and private sectors in Dubai or in the UAE in order to connect them with startups and scale-ups with innovative solutions from around the world in order to co-create and test solutions for predefined projects or challenges as we, uh, as we call them. So um, through our programs and our cohorts, uh, we have conducted eight cohorts so far and we are working on the ninth now in different programs. And our aim is to build partnership between the UAE government and the corporate entities with different global startups that are considered innovative startups. So far, we have uh, signed more than 180 MOUs. We have more than 290 participating companies who conducted more than 89 pilot projects from more than 39 countries around the world. So now I will hand over to my colleague and partners from Rashmont. Uh, Jules, the floor is all yours. Uh, he will introduce the team and Rashmont and the challenges as well. Thank you for the introduction. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jules. I am part of Richemont, but I will start by introducing my dear colleague, Johan, who is the regional sales director for Mont Blanc uh, in the region. And we have also on the call, uh, Leo, who is not showing up on the slide, but is the head of innovation back in Geneva. And for myself, I'm in charge of something we call people experience within Richemont, which means that I take care of L&D, uh, DE&I, and a lot of other topics. So I'm working across all the maisons also. So I will share with you on the next slide, what is Richemont um, and what is the purpose of all our maisons? If we can go on the next. Perfect. So what is Richemont? Uh, Richemont is one of the leading luxury player uh, in the world. We have a lot of maisons in our portfolios. If I try to sum it up between the different categories that we have, um, we have uh, the jewelry side with uh, Buccellati, Cartier, and Van Cleef and Arpels. We have another category, which is the watches maison. 
uh, with IWC, Jajor Le Coutre, Panerai, Piaget, Roger Dubuis, Vacheron, only to name a few. Uh, the third category would be the online players uh, that are Watchfinders, Net Aporté, Mr. Porter, The Outnet, and Nukes. And last but not least, we have the fashion and accessories Maison with Alaya, Chloe, Dunhill, Montblanc, and some others also. What is the key uh, connection between all the maisons uh, is that we always focus uh, on craftsmanship and creativity across all the different categories. And one of the pain points that we try to solve with all the maisons and all the products we have is to create memorable services and experiences uh, that could be both in the physical world and in the digital world. And next, I will give the mic to Johan and he will share with you a bit more about the different challenges that we thought of. Thank you, Jules, and thank you Ed, for the amazing introduction. Hi, everyone. Johan Daron, as uh, Jules mentioned, I uh, am the commercial director for uh, Mont Blanc, one of the Richemont Maisons uh, in the region. And just to put you in, uh, in, in the loop of um, those uh, challenges, so we as, uh, as Richemont Group, we had uh, and we still have actually many, many different challenges that we would like to uh, attack. Um, but, you know, at some point, focus uh, is the name of the game. I am sure you guys know it better than us uh, since you are the entrepreneurs and focus is definitely what makes entrepreneurs succeed or fail. And ultimately, we decided for this session of the uh, uh, Richmond Innovation Incubator to focus on two main uh, pain points to, uh, to solve. Number one, uh, being the interactive product experience. I will uh, develop on it in a second. And uh, the second challenge being the data-driven data personalization, uh, which is also a big challenge by itself, which I will also elaborate on it uh, later on. But now back to challenge number one and uh, interactive product experience. So here we are looking for technologies for you guys uh, where you can help us uh, engaging with our customer uh, through new and immersive way, uh, should it be in store with uh, different activations uh, for different type of products and for the different maison that uh, Jules mentioned just before. Uh, here, uh, just as a matter of, uh, of fact, we could think about uh, uh, artificial, uh, sorry, augmented reality uh, technologies, virtual reality. I know that today the trendy world is, uh, is the metaverse, so it all brings us to actually uh, this virtual reality world. Uh, it could be 3D uh, display and interactive display in stores, uh, or even technology that could bring the brick and mortar uh, world within the ECOM, uh, which is uh, more and more gaining market share over the, the brick and mortar business. So the problem, uh, as I mentioned, for us are uh, that based on different maisons, we have sometimes very, very uh, unique items that are traveling the world. Uh, and it's quite sometimes difficult to bring the experience of those items to the specific customer that would come, for example, to the uh, Dubai Mall Boutique when the item is in, is in uh, New York. Uh, here we are talking about, uh, again, very unique items that uh, are on the one hand high value pieces, uh, on the second hand, help us to build this community of collectors, uh, no matter which uh, brands we are talking about. And that's one of the, of the problems. The second thing uh, we are trying to solve here uh, is in terms of uh, becoming more and more attractive to, uh, to people. So storefront display or activation, uh, interactive activation within the, the boutiques of, uh, of the brands are definitely technologies that we are interested in uh, combining with our day-to-day -day business. Next slide, please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so a few points that are important for, for Richemont. Uh, number one, as I mentioned, so we're losing a lot of in-store opportunities uh, to build with our customer relationship and generate sales. Uh, when we don't have those products in store and when we don't have the, actually the right technology tools to implement and bring the experience uh, within the stores, that's number one problem and important for us. And the second thing is that uh, we believe that Dubai uh, being placed and positioned as an extraordinary market for the retail world, uh, you know, most of the luxury brands 
uh, in Richmond, their biggest boutique worldwide will be in the way. So this is the, the perfect and exact marketplace where together with your technology, we could work uh, together on solving those issues and, uh, and see if we can find a solution to them uh, together. Now, number two, last but not the least uh, challenge, uh, we call this the data-driven personalization. Here, uh, the challenge itself is that we are facing a lot of uh, a huge database of, of clients per brands. Uh, and we are not good enough, and I am not shy to say it, uh, even if uh, uh, I'm talking from a, a big brand and big group perspective, but we are not good enough uh, in terms of analyzing this data, in terms of crushing this data, in terms of uh, uh, being able to properly and deeply understand this data. Uh, so this is where technology such as uh, artificial intelligence, such as machine learning, for example, uh, or even in-store technology that would analyze the traffic, uh, video uh, analysis technology that would also analyze uh, even body language of uh, customers in store could help us a lot uh, in terms of uh, uh, business and in terms of uh, positively impacting the, both the experience and the sales at the end of the day. So again, uh, the problems that uh, I just mentioned uh, are written here. I think we can move on to the next slide. Um, and ultimately, uh, the important thing to keep in mind here, uh, and this is what we are trying also to um, uh, increase when using those technologies, is to keep and develop our customer-centric approach. Uh, for many, many years in the past, and I will talk from the macro perspective of the luxury world, it was all about products. And I think that in today's world, we are uh, uh, way more into customer-centric approach. Uh, so when we can combine technologies uh, in order to be better professional uh, in, in, a, in customer centric approach, this is, I think, we believe the, the, the game changer uh, for, the, for the next years. Wow. I will lead to, I will let my colleague from uh, Dubai Future Foundation now uh, uh, discuss about how to, in, uh, to get involved into the program. Um, just to finish here, uh, I believe for you guys, this is a unique opportunity uh, from uh, two main perspectives. Number one, it's actually reverse engineering. You guys working on those uh, disruptive technologies are always looking for uh, clients. Uh, here it's a reverse engineering, meaning it's a potential client, future client that tells you, we want to solve together with you uh, certain uh, pains and certain needs. Uh, should it work at the end of the incubator, you know, uh, sky, is, uh, sky is the limit. That's number one. And number two, uh, the way the, the program is structured, and my colleagues from Dubai Future Foundation will also uh, elaborate about it, the way the program is structured is uh, unique. Uh, from wherever you are in the world, we will bring you to Dubai. Uh, the cost is on us, from uh, the travel cost to the accommodation to all the logistics related to visa. Uh, so that's a unique opportunity not to miss, and uh, we are very much looking forward uh, to work together and to disrupt uh, this uh, century business that uh, uh, needs some good uh, disruption and good technologies to, to move forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Johan and Rob uh, Jules. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. This is Natasha, uh, and I'll um, you know talk a little bit more about how you can actually get involved uh, in solving these challenges uh, with the Richmond team. Now, so basically, just to tell you a little bit about the uh, you know the, the way you can apply. Uh, so the best way is for you to create your future ID. Uh, the future ID is actually you can go to id.dubaifuture.ae, or even if you're on our Dubai Future uh, DubaiFuture.ae website, you can actually uh, you find the option to create a profile or a future ID. So you set that up. Once you set that up, you go ahead and. Uh, go to the program, the future of luxury retail, uh, and go ahead and click on apply. So 
on this, uh, we'll also, uh, after this webinar, share with you the exact link for the program. So you just have to uh, you know, go ahead and click to follow uh, and uh, fill out the application form. So once you do that, um, we would have received your application and there's a whole process for shortlisting and evaluation. Your application will be reviewed uh, from an application perspective. There are also video interviews, et cetera, uh, but we will be uh, thoroughly reviewing uh, each of the applicants according to our evaluation criteria. Now, those that are selected, uh, so we would be looking at the top five applicants uh, with the most innovative solutions for each challenge to join us for phase one. Uh, so to make it clear, this program is actually a two-phase program. Uh, the first phase of the program is very much focused on you understanding the scope of the challenge, uh, understanding in detail the current, let's say, processes in place at Richmond, uh, or uh, what is their true, let's uh, outcomes that they're seeking out of raising these challenges. And uh, you will also in that course of time be proposing a proof of concept. So once you would have had that download of information with regards to requirements of uh, Richmond, you would then propose a proof of concept to prove to them uh, that you are the best uh, partner uh, to scale with them. Uh, so this is the focus of phase one. And at the end of phase one, there would be a pitch uh, in which you would then position your proof of concept or the pilot project that you would do if you were to be selected for phase two. Uh, and then the Richmond team will choose the top two uh, or the top projects uh, to invite to phase two. Now, these companies that are going to be invited to phase two, we cover their flights, visas and accommodation for them to join us in Dubai. We cover this for up to two participants per company. The whole idea is we want you to be able to uh, be enabled uh, to collaborate closely uh, at, in uh, in Dubai with Richmond. Uh, so we, we try to focus that in. Uh, and also this program, this phase will be eight weeks long. So the proof of concept that you will be doing, be it with some Masons, will it be directly with the Richmond group uh, directly, uh, will be for the course of these eight weeks uh, for which uh, you will be in Dubai. Now, at the end of these eight weeks, uh, depending on who uh, the top companies are, the Richmond team will then make that selection of who they, they can continue and envision continuing collaboration with beyond just the scope of the program. Now, just to highlight some uh, benefits. Uh, so firstly, you're looking at uh, potential partnerships with top level stakeholders in the UAE. Um, and, you know, you get access to, of course, the, you know, the team at Richmond, but other government sector um, organizations and partners as well. Uh, the Dubai Future Foundation as part of this program takes zero equity in your business. And we also of course cover the round trip airfare uh, and accommodation if in the case your team is selected for phase two. Now, if you do make it to phase two, um, what you you also get a chance to join the most vibrant ecosystem in the region, uh, which is our area 2071, which you'll learn a lot more about when you're here. Uh, you also have the opportunity to be connected with regional investors uh, dependent on mutual fit. Um, you also can undergo an accelerated process for company setup and formation, uh, something that we can support you with, especially as you look to uh, further strengthen your capabilities and explore uh, the local market and region. Region. And of course, you'll have access to state of the art creative workspace and prototyping equipment as part of the ecosystem. And you also have actually the opportunity to get nominated to apply for the golden visa, um, which is all really great. Now, what we'll do, um, I, I, you know, now we've gotten to know a little bit more about uh, the program, uh, the Dubai Future Accelerators. We've gotten to understand more detail Richmond's challenges. And of course, now we've clarified how you can apply. Uh, I think now we'll, I'll hand it over to my colleague, Hind, who can go ahead and take uh, your questions. For questions, feel free to submit them in the Q&A tab uh, at the bottom. All right, we have a uh, question from Pietro. Um, are you interested in IoT solutions as well in order to get data from your stores? This would be um, for the Richmond. Yeah, I'll take this one. Uh, the short answer is yes. 
obviously we will need to uh, to understand way more than just uh, IoT, uh, but definitely interesting to hearing more and uh, and yes, thank you for the question, Pietro. Um, another question we've got is we have all required to support, but maybe two to three different companies could do this work combined, I guess. So I guess as a scope of a partnership, would you be open to two or three companies uh, collaborating together uh, to provide the solution? Maybe Jules or Johan? Yeah, th this one could totally be, uh, be doable. Um, yeah, let's supply as a joint uh, as a joint project. Because as Johan said, it's literally test and learn, and you can always customize it to the to the Richmond context. So yeah, let's make it happen this way also. And I know that Leo wanted to uh, jump uh, and answer for the previous question. I think. Yeah, no, no but no, no, nothing to, to to add to Johan's answer. Uh, definitely, uh, uh, IoT will be, uh, I guess, part of the solution, and uh, but it's quite a, a broad uh, uh, area, but. Uh, uh, definitely in terms of, uh, I don't know, sensors, tracking, uh, being able to, uh, to, to react to uh, what is happening in the store, uh, IoT would be uh, most probably involved. Okay, we have another question. Uh, the question says, do you have any specific tech you have in mind in terms of solutions? or what you're looking at in terms of solutions. You've mentioned AR and VR earlier. Anything else uh, Rishwant is looking at in terms of solutions other than VR and AR, maybe? I can start answering if you want, and, uh, and uh, Johan and Jules, you, you, can, you can follow up. But uh, um, I, I think we, we don't want to restrict the list. I think definitely we need to also uh, follow what is happening and, and, and be inspired by best practices in the retail environment. And I think AR definitely needs to be on the list. Uh, it opens a lot of possibilities. Uh, it's uh, a good way to uh, uh, easily create some immersive universes uh, with a very limited uh, uh, need in terms of hardware. So that's why uh, we, we would put it on the list. VR as well, even if it has some uh, Additional level of complexities. Uh, so, but but I think what what is important and 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 I think uh, uh, Yuan was also clear in the introduction about uh, uh, Richmond and and who we are. What what will be important is really the experience. So we are not looking at a specific technology just to tick the box and to say okay we are doing uh, AR and we are doing VR. We are looking at creating a, 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 an emotional experience an immersive experience for our clients. Uh, and we need to find the, the best technology that, that fit within our, our environment. But most probably AR will be a good one. All right, uh, we have another question. I think this is uh, to better understand the current uh, uh, you know, um, experiences. So what tech are you already using to understand your customers? So if, uh, if you could just elaborate on that, I think this is related to the second challenge. Um, Johan, I'll let you start. Uh, the, the, the question under anonymous attendee makes me smile. <laughs> but uh, but uh, we are using obviously different trend, uh, different uh, type of technologies through, uh, through our businesses. I think if I understand well, the question is uh, based on what we are using currently, where do we want to go? And uh, this will help uh, the people here understand. We are really looking for the... Uh, for disruptive technologies. So things that are not um, uh, seen on a day-to-day -day basis in, uh, implemented in the luxury uh, retail environment. This is what we are focusing on. And this is back also to the previous question that uh, Leo uh, answered right before. Uh, that's our focus. And um, this is where we want to go. All right, perfect. Um, we have a question. Uh, I think this is regarding, um, should it be a company or can individuals uh, in with different background and experience can apply for the challenge? Uh, I think I'll go ahead and answer that. 
so unfortunately, the application process is set up as for us to uh, accept applications from companies. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a registered company. Uh, you can, if you will be having, uh, you know, if you're going to be collaborating with uh, a number of individuals, you can already set up your application, create a mock company. And then if in the case you're selected, you can always look to set up that local entity. Um, but yes, if in the case that you have an exciting um, for a solution, do share it with us. Uh, and uh, if in the case that it is selected, then you can always do the necessary work uh, to, you know, be able to provide that solution. But just to clarify, I think the most uh, important thing is that you should have a minimal a viable, uh, you know, kind of a prototype already, uh, of, you know, to be able to test, uh, given that the program is only eight weeks. Uh, so creating something from entire scratch to doing a pilot or uh, actually testing out a solution. So we just have to be mindful of that. Okay, we have another question. Um, um, as it says, as for VR and AR and metaverse, is Richmond team developing some vision towards that, which it will be shared with the participant? And under this program, will be there uh, will there be a chance to collaborate with people on Richmond team who will lead those areas? So basically, um, will they have access to your vision, and uh, will they be working with leads on their these areas of Richmond? Maybe I can I can start answering, but uh, the, the answer is yes. And also, uh, Johan and Jules, you, you can detail uh, uh, not only there will be an access to, to the vision, but, but also uh, a lot of discussion with the team uh, from the Maison in Dubai to, to make sure that uh, uh, that basically what the, the, the team or the company is doing is aligned with uh, uh, what we are looking for. And, and really, what we want uh, is, is to be able to, uh, we are really focused on implementation and, and being able to deliver something concrete and tangible. So uh, that's why it's super important that uh, we, 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 we have these interactions between the, the participants and, and, the, and the team in the Maison. But maybe Jules, you, you want to elaborate yes, a bit more on this? Uh, definitely. One, one of the key points uh, and the, but maybe the best perks of the program is that you will get access to all our experts within the group. And everything that you want to work on during the proof of concept will be tailor made with the experts. So you will get access to the local experts uh, based in the UAE, but even in, in the region, and also to the group experts uh, back at the different HQs, should it be Geneva or France, uh, because we wanted to meet, yeah, to be the best uh, pilot ever. So you will get access to, to everything. All right, perfect. Um, I, we have a question from Philomena, uh, wondering uh, if you could describe your target client for your brands. So with regards to aid, age, culture, lifestyle, and also the target, who you want to target in the future. I'll, I'll take this one. Yeah. yeah, I'll, I'll take this one uh, since I'm the one coming from, from the brand here. Uh, it's a very good question, but the problem is that it really, really depends. Uh, each brand has a different positioning. Uh, Sometimes within the brand, within the brand, uh, certain pro uh, product will uh, be relevant for a certain category of people, and 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 so on. So to give one answer to this question is uh, basically impossible, um, uh, since it uh, it really depends from uh, from brand to brand and from product to product. When it comes to the to the target market of the future, uh, uh, you know, uh, generations are are uh, having their own trends. Uh, for example, today the what we call the millennial or the younger ones are becoming uh, have different habits in terms of consumption than uh, the, the older generation. Uh, this is where technology, by the way, is. Uh, super important, relevant, and actually needed to adapt to them. So, you know, within one brand, and I can talk for the name of, uh, of Mont Blanc, which is the brand I work for, uh, we do have this scope of different populations, uh, and therefore the strategy in terms of uh, uh, retaining them, acquiring new ones, really depends on, uh, on, uh, on the sub-target market within this. But you will get access to the customer segmentations during the proof of concept uh, because we will pair you with the maison 
that has the strongest use case uh, for your solution. So once you are paired with a, a specific maison, or if the tech is available for all the maison, you will get access to, uh, to this. So all the customer segmentation will be uh, available. Okay, thank you, Jules and Johan. Another question. On the data-driven challenge, do you already have the data available for companies to start interrupting customers' insight? Yeah, I can take this one. It's a very good question. Uh, and uh, the, the answer is, is yes. Uh, I mean, it will be uh, anonymized and a bit dummy data. Uh, but, uh, but yes, you will get access to, uh, to, to some, some data to be able to play with it. Thank you, Leo. Another question is how does Rashmon picture a, a, um, a perfect solution or POSC? I'll take this one. Um, I think we are not picturing actually a, a perfect tech solution. What we do picture is a perfect positive impact uh, on client experience, which will then uh, go into a positive impact into the brand, into the sales, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we are not, as Leo mentioned before, we are not uh, uh, specific. Uh, specific enough about which technology we are looking for. We want to remain broad enough in order to, uh, to see what you guys uh, have in your pockets. Uh, and what we do picture is actually the, the output, not of the technology, but, uh, uh, but of the positive impact on the customer experience that will uh, also impact many other things after. Thank you, Johan. And I think this is our last question. Please, if you have any questions, feel free, plug them in. Uh, did Rishman try any of the suggested technologies before and how was their experience? I think this was answered, but if you want to elaborate more, please go on. I can briefly elaborate. So yes, we, we did already uh, some experimentation specifically uh, on AR and VR. We uh, personally, I'm, I'm quite, I mean, just as a technology, I'm quite convinced about AR in, in the area of retail. I, I, I see a bit more challenges in, in terms of VR uh, just because of the, uh, of the, the hardware. Um, but uh, the feedback is that um, uh, now it's time to go beyond the, uh, just the, the buzz that uh, was around these technologies uh, two, three, uh, four years ago. Uh, and it's really about adapting the content and, and producing a content that, that fits specifically for, for this technology, uh, which is uh, actually not so, uh, uh, not so easy. But if you are able to, uh, to build a content that is uh, uh, emotional, that is, uh, uh, that is really taking advantages of the, the immersive power of this technology, it can be, uh, it can be super, uh, super strong. All right, perfect. Thank you so much, Leo. Um, we, I was just going through the chat and we also have a question there. Um, so the question there is from Olivia, uh, asking us how many companies will be selected for the accelerator program. So um, I'll go ahead and respond to that. So basically after your application, you submit your application and it's reviewed, the top five companies for each challenge uh, would be invited to phase one, which is going to be conducted wholly virtually. And then the top three companies per challenge or up to three companies per challenge uh, will be invited in residence in Dubai. All right. Do we have any more questions? Last chance. Thank you very much for uh, attending the webinar. It was such a pleasure answering all your questions. Thank you, Rashmant, uh, Johan, Leo, uh, Jules, and everyone. Um, uh, just a reminder of the deadlines. So the application deadline is the 26th of April, 11.59 uh, p.m. You can apply through our, our website, dubaifuture.ae. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us on info at thebyfuture.gov.ae. Thank you again for attending the webinar. Shukran, everyone. And uh, we're looking forward to looking at your applications and evaluating them soon. Thank you.
Thank, Thank you, everyone. You, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. And you, and you yes. should be able to uh, revisit this webinar, any of the information you might have missed, or if you want to pass it along to any of your friends or your network, uh, you will be able to find this webinar in the link to the challenge um, on our website. And this will be also included in the email that you will receive in the coming days. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.